We can call HP's new Victus 16 model a replacement for their Pavilion Gaming Laptop series. It's better than Pavilion devices, but sits right below HP Omen series. The graphics chip and processor both impress, the 16.1-inch display increases immersion, and the keyboard is reasonable. Hold on, fanboy. This is not one of your sponsored sales videos. Tell us about everything that's wrong with the Victus 16. All right, so we've been using the Victus 16 for a month now, and we can safely say that if you buy the Victus 16, you shouldn't expect lashings of pace, good screen quality, or a particularly high refresh rate. Let's start with the biggest drawback, the display. The display isn't outstanding, though it's not bad for the price. The display bezels doesn't protrude more than a few millimeters, though there's a massive one-inch chin at the bottom, which kind of gives the laptop a 2014 look. But the screen-to-body ratio is 8 to 4%. Tell me about the wobble. Is it really that terrible? Well, if you're in the bed like I am most of the time, saucing the taco. I mean, burping the worm. You might experience some wobble during painting the pickle. But I really don't think this whole wobble thing is as serious as people make it out to be. Most other laptops we got our hands on had some degree of wobble issue due to the fact that the entire display is connected to the device with plastic or aluminum hinges. It especially gets worse as the screen gets bigger, and the 16.1-inch display the Victus 16 has isn't a small one. So you can expect one or two seconds of wobbling when you open the screen. And the hinges are tight enough that it doesn't wobble or shake enough to distract you while you're typing. It gets noticeable when you're typing on the bed with the device on your lap, however. The bottom line is, as long as you are gentle with the display, you shouldn't be too concerned with the hinges. Next up, we have the keyboard. Well, depending on how you're going to be using the Victus 16, the keyboard could either be a beneficial or disadvantageous. While you'll never mistake the HP Victus for a productivity PC, the keyboard doesn't disappoint either. Perhaps to accommodate the keypad to the right of the keyboard, the key width appears to be perhaps a millimeter smaller than a productivity laptop. The pitch, or the gap between the keys, appears to be about the same. The smaller keys threw off my typing for a bit, though the springy, otherwise comfortable keyboard should be sufficient for typing a paper as well as orchestrating an MMO raid. The roughly 16 to 9 display ratio also allows HP to fit in a number pad on the right-hand side of the keyboard, a necessity for left-handed gamers. I'd like to point out that this is a backlit keyboard with a single-stage white backlight. No RGB options here as they're reserved for more premium Omen notebooks. The laptop has a decent-sized touchpad that supports Windows Precision drivers. It's bigger than the one on the Lenovo Legion 7 gaming laptop, but at least this one's bigger in size. Overall, you feel at home if you're coming from an older HP Omen laptop or if you've used one previously. The only thing it lacks is the RGB lighting, but I know a lot of you would appreciate that. For gaming laptop that costs above $1,000, its speakers are a bit disappointing. The dual speakers certainly put out enough volume. In fact, I had to turn the volume down slightly below the maximum for testing. HP asked Bang and Olufsen to tune its speakers as it does with many of its laptops. The resulting soundscape sounds a bit clunky, emphasizing the mid-range though without the corresponding highs and lows. To be fair, using the built-in graphics equalizer within the B and O audio control app certainly helped, but I was never quite able to find a mix that sounded quite right. The Victus 16 also offers noise cancellation features for either video conferencing or simply interacting with Cortana and other digital assistants. In general, these work pretty well, though my home office is usually free of background noise. If there's one thing that the Victus 16 gaming laptop couldn't borrow from its Omen siblings is battery life. Most of the HP Omen laptops, at least the one I personally used, have pretty good battery life. That's something I can't say for the Victus 16 gaming laptop because I had a middling experience with it. The 70WHR battery inside this machine couldn't really keep up with my day-to-day -day workloads. I was only able to get around 5 hours of usage on a single charge, with the display set to about 75% brightness. Setting the laptop mode in favor of battery life did help a little, but it's still nothing exceptional. You'll often find yourself reaching out for the charger. While the Core i7-11800H processor inside the HP Victus 16 is moderately powerful, the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti is on the low end of the 3000 series. Though it can offer both RTX ray trace graphics and DLSS 2.0 to budget notebooks, and that stands for something. When you're playing the Rise of the Tomb Raider, you'll get about 90 frames per second. However, it drops to between 30 and 40 FPS when you're playing more modern games like Metro Exodus. Our results imply that the HP Victus 16 should be a solid contender for 1080p gaming, but you'll need to dial down the graphics quality in places. We have another video where we did a benchmark test with more than 20 AAA games, so check that out for a more detailed look.